all right all right it's been a while but this is one of those videos in which i'm rage quitting i'm rage quitting and i'm just stopping trading right now and doing this recap because i got, gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here uh green day of fucking two thousand bucks um damn recap okay so This fucking stock, man. Fucking hell. This is ridiculous. Like, let me show you something. Let me, let me, let me show you something. Let's start off by doing this. No, no, right. no. Let's start off by learning a quick lesson. That you don't do market orders on light speed. You don't do market orders on light speed. Look at this fucking robbery. It's insane. This is why Lightspeed is a piece of garbage and nobody uses it. I don't understand how Ross was just a shit. It's awful. Garb Lightspeed. It's poo on a stick. You pay commissions and you get shit fills. Amazing. Um, check this out. So, I had a market order because. In the last few days that I've been trading with my Lightspeed account, I have an order to buy the ask plus three cents. But usually, we've been seeing very volatile momentum and stocks with big spreads, right? So usually either I don't get filled on the ask at all, and then the stock goes without me because the offset is too tight, or you know even if there's a dollar share spread, if I buy the ask, I'm gonna get filled the ask, and there's no way I'm gonna get filled between the spreads. Yes, I could set I, I I guess I could say I could send a midpoint order, but you know the point of me using a market order is to either get filled at the ask, like I would usually if I just buy the ask, or have the open possibility of getting filled between the spreads. If I don't get between the filled between the spread, that's fine. At the end of the day, it's a market order, right? But at least fill me at the fucking ask, man. All right, watch, watch. There's the mouse right here at the bottom. Watch when one click it. Okay, I click the I click at fifty seven. I get filled at sixty eight. Oh my god, that's brutal! Sixty eight was not even on the ask. Holy shit! Look at that. I punch at fifty seven. I get filled sixty eight. Have you seen sixty eight? God, and then. Anyways, take a loss because of that horrendous fill. And then I buy I buy it again for a dip now. Look, look at the ask. 34, 35, 44. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Holy shit. And then if I would have pressed ask plus three, it wouldn't have gotten filled. So, man. You know, the day started with me getting a little triggered because of that. Insanity. And now, right now, I'm just giving profits back. Another day that I give more than 50% back, and I'm just getting sick of that. I'm just getting sick of it. Friday, up five grand. No, 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 up seven grand, finish up three. The day prior, up 5,000, finish up one. Now, up 5,200, finish up 2,000. <laughs> And it just seems that, it just seems like for me to stop trading, I have to get a nice haircut. And only then I can stop. I'm unable to realize that momentum and the best opportunities came and went. But instead, I just keep trading whatever pops up until I catch a big loss. But my first big loss was on this stock is crunk. This stock, man. This stock, this stock, this stock, this stock. All right, so this stock is being called out. I don't even have it in my watch list. I don't have it in the scanner. It's just being called out by the chat room. And, you know, it looks good, right? It looks good. 
At the time, we hadn't broken pre-market highs, which is 569. And, you know, the breakout of pre-market highs is a trade that I like tra taking, right? I take it and I just get obliterated on the whips and on the fills. It's like, it got terrible fills, right? I anticipate the breakout. It breaks out by like 10 cents. I try to sell and then I only get like a two cent winner. And then on the other side, when I'm catching the dips, I'm catching bigger losses. It just feels, feels, oh my God. Anyways, just lost on this stock, on this one minute pullback. I thought we were going to keep going here. I accumulated for the break and hold of six. I thought we were going to break and hold six and then go even further. But no, we just reversed all the way down to 69 and now, and now to 49. Lost almost a thousand on that. Like, that's so stupid. And then the one that really pissed me off today. Where is it? Where are you? There you are. PWM. I saw when it was halted up right here. Made $700 on this dip and drip. And then gave it all back on this false breakout. And then on this, you know, flush. Pullbacks and dip buying is brutal, especially in this type of market because attention is spread out. We are trading stocks without any fundamental reason to be going higher. It's just a stock that's, that is getting propped up, it goes higher, and then everybody trades it. There's another stock, another stock comes around, but somebody props it up, goes higher, everybody trades it. Then another stock comes around, goes up, somebody props it up, it goes higher, everybody trades it. And that's the theme of this type of market and that's the theme of the momentum we've been seeing in the last couple of weeks. There's no the one. There's no, this is the right stock. This is the stock with breaking news, high relative volume that everybody's paying attention to. There's none of that. You know, in a scenario like that, dips are usually bought up. One minute pullbacks are usually bought up. But in a scenario in which there's just a billion stocks going up, then nobody gives a shit about the dip because when a stock starts dipping, another one's already flying. Anyways, I wasn't able to realize that and I just gave a bunch of profits back. Oh my God, I probably shouldn't do recaps right after trading because right now I'm triggered and looking back to this video, I might be a little embarrassed about my behavior, but man, fuck. I'm up 2000, so I'm going to be grateful for that. Grateful for that. And, and, and all you guys that are looking at me like, why, Marcelo, why are you crying? Oh, you're up 2000. That would be my dream. I understand that. But just imagine, just imagine that you're up $100 and you give it 50 back or whatever your daily goal is. Just imagine that number, your daily goal, and then you give more than 50% back. That's the feeling I'm feeling, right? Whether if it is 2,000 or 200, it doesn't matter. The feeling is that I just gave more than 50% of my profits back. So that's very triggering and it's always triggering. Oh man, at least I have the self-awareness to know that I'm triggered and that I'm going to walk away. Anyways, conclusion of this day, life speed sucks. No, I don't understand why somebody would ever trade on that shit. I am I am profitable on life speed. I guess I could pull up my statements. Let's see. But I've only made like eight thousand dollars. I paid over fifty percent in commission. The commissions are crazy. Five bucks to buy, five bucks to sell, a billion hidden fees. ECN fees. Where is this? Well, whatever. If you don't believe me, you don't believe me. I'm up like nine to ten thousand on my my account, but I've made over twenty grand in profits. But I paid like fifty percent in fees. And then I don't know. I don't know how much I paid with some garbage feels like this one, like the one I showed you today. All right. So bullet point number one. Lightspeed sucks. That's number one. Number two, um, if you give 50% in profits back and you get triggered by that, walk away. Because you're trading while, while trading emotionally, it's, you know, it's just a recipe for disaster. Number three, okay, Lightspeed doesn't suck, fuck's sakes. Lightspeed doesn't suck. Market orders on Lightspeed suck. Why they suck? Because, mark, because Lightspeed is a direct access routing broker, right? So you go straight to the market. Because you go straight to the market, whenever a high frequency 
trading algorithm sees your order coming through, they're going to make sure you, they fuck you over. On the other hand, on, Lice, on, on TD Ameritrade and any of the American brokers that are free commission, they trade in a, in like a, they trade in a pool of free commission brokers, let's say. So they're trading against each other. Um, so usually when I buy and sell, I'm buying and selling the shares of somebody else at TD, which is why they're able to give us price improvements. Um, because, the, because the orders really and truly don't go all the way out all the way out to the market. Only if there's no shares within the within the Thinker Swim with within within the TD Ameritrade pool, they go out into the market. But usually, what that creates is a safe environment in which predatory algos are not really screwing up our market orders. Another reason why we can trade market orders and feel like the fills are fine, because you are you're actually buying at the ask, if not midpoint. Or when you're selling, you're selling at the bid, if not midpoint. But when you do a market order with Lightspeed, holy shit. You know, I, I knew this. I knew this, right? And I, I knew this, but I still gave it a shot. Um, when you do this, predatory algos are going to guarantee that you get the worst feels ever. So if you're in Lightspeed, you better stick with free commissions. Another thing on Lightspeed is that they are very good at adding and removing liquidity. So if you add and remove liquidity, they are good. For example, if you ever try to put an order to sell at the ask plus five cents on Think or Swim or on TD Ameritrade, you're never going to get filled um, unless the stock actually goes all the way up there and then the bid hits it and then you're going to get filled. So for removing, for adding liquidity, life speed's good. Um, For buying the bid, for buying a bid with an offset, life speed is good as well because you add liquidity. For you know dark pool routing, for midpoint trades, maybe that's life speed's fine. But I would never use life speed if I if I didn't have to. Like the only reason why I have life speed is for pre market trading, because Think Stream sucks for pre market, and also for the first one to two minutes of the open because um, TD Ameritrade lags at the open. Okay, that's lesson number one. Nice bit sucks, unless you're adding and removing liquidity. Um, okay, now number two. You gotta be, as a trader, you gotta be self-aware and you have to be able to be honest with yourself. And, you know, walk away if you're emotional. The market is here to stay. I just know that if I keep trading, I'm going to get even more furious and I'm going to give all my profits back. So how about if I don't do that? I just been in this position too many times. Fuck sakes. This video is, an, is probably, you know, I'm causing a lot and all that. So I apologize. Usually my videos are not like this, but I'm just, I'm just emotionally fueled right now. Um, so. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so that's that. What else? Another, another important lesson. Oh yeah. This team on the market, whenever you're trading a stock that is not the one and, and it's not obvious, the breakouts may actually seem safer. No, 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 no. The breaks are, the breakouts are actually safer than the pullbacks because what we've been seeing a lot is something that a lot of people like to call round trips which is stock, and the stock does that. It goes, 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 goes. And then it goes all the way back. It, it just comes right back when it came, right back for, for where it came from. Um, usually when we have the one and we have a strong leading gap or breaking news, tight spread, high relative volume, we see a lot of this. And if you look at this chart, the dips and the pullbacks are the probably the best places to buy, right? But if you're gonna be trading something that does this, then the pullback doesn't seem that good because this is not happening. In fact, stock is just fading. So the problem why, the, the reason why this is not happening is because attention is spread out. And because attention is spread out, not a lot of people stick around when a ticker starts to pull back. 
because when a ticker starts to pull back, something else is already flying. So then why would I try to buy this if it's like a side stock that has been used and dropped if I have another new stock flying, right? All the attention from the bulls that are on this stock shift to this one. Nobody steps off buying the dip. Everybody's buying breakouts as this thing is going parabolic. And then there you are left alone trying to be one against the market, <laughs> putting your putting your putting your thousand shares there in the bid, hoping that this thing is going to bounce. But yet, you know, surprise, surprise, nobody gives a crap about your thousand shares because that is nothing. Right. And then, you know, the stock doesn't bounce. And there you are catching a big loss. That's exactly what happened to me right here. I tried to buy this dip. I thought that more people were going to come, come through and buy this dip. But I guess I was wrong. Got flushed on lost less than 100. Um, and yeah, from my biggest winner, let's actually review that as well. My biggest winner is PWM. No, 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 PMN. This is a stock that was also not on our watch list. Also another one that, you know, it just goes all the way up and then comes all the way back down. Do you see one minute pullback holding? Just show me one. No, not even one. Goes up, gets halted up. I know that the breakouts are a little bit safer in this environment. So I get aggressive on this um, resumption of this halt. I buy this dip. There's a micro dip right there to 680s. And then we fly all the way up to nine. Amazing, right? Make the bulk of my profit in that. There's a minute pullback tries to pop up, fails, and off we go to another round trip. To the depths, to the freaking depths. I have all the session recorded. I'm still going to upload it, even if it's a frustrating day. I'm going to upload it so that you guys hopefully can learn a thing or two from my profitable trades today. Um, but yeah, but definitely an annoying day. An annoying, annoying day to say the least. Um, by the way, if you want to see how I trade, make sure to check out my video from yesterday. Yesterday, I posted a video of a full live trading archive. This is a day in which I made 11,000 and then I lost 8,000. So I finished the day up only up 3,000. Um, but you know, it's just an almost two hour session of me just hitting, hitting the hotkeys, buying, selling, level two is on, one minute chart is on, PL is up, clock is up, everything's up. Um, so you can really see and try to understand where I'm buying and why and where I'm selling and why. So go check out this video. Um, leave a like if you want to see more of them. And um, yeah, so that's number one. Number two, if you want to learn how I trade and make $10,000 a day. I'm kidding. That, that, that's not true. And I'm not guaranteeing that at all. In fact, even I don't do that. Uh, but anyways, um, check out this course. Check out our course. Um, we've been adding a, new, a bunch of new lectures, especially right now that we've been seeing this parabolic momentum. Um, yeah, so if you wanna if you wanna learn how to trade from absolute beginner all the way up to advanced trader, make sure to check out this video. Um, we were running a coupon code for forty percent off up until Friday. If you use code in independence. Um, but that code expired last Friday for 40% off. But I still haven't canceled it. I still haven't removed the coupon code because I forgot. So I'm going to be doing that right after this recap. So if you were off, off on the fences, whether if you want to join or not, try coupon code independence one last time. And then that, now that now that forty percent off coupon will be gone for real, and then we're gonna be back to normal prices. Temptation right there, right there. Temptation. Ooh, that's a nice push. We're so far away though. Still. Anyways, it's been the mighty fellas. Frustrating day to say the least. <sighs> but we live to trade another day. All right, peace.